I think the biggest benefit people don't understand about TypeScript is just adding a TS config to your file and turning on check.js gives you a bunch of error checking basically for free. This is how simple it is to add TypeScript to a new Phoenix project. Go to your assets directory, go to JavaScript, rename this file from app.js to app.ts, literally just rename it to a TypeScript file, search for where it normally says app.js in your config here, not this one, leave this one alone because this is the script that's being loaded and it's going to compile to JavaScript. But you want this line here in the config where esbuild is going to look for this file, rename it to app.ts, save it. And now if we run the server and go check on the project, everything runs correctly. We see that there is no errors. Everything has compiled correctly. That's literally all it takes. You just got to rename the file and change that one spot. So we just kind of speed ran adding TypeScript in like less than a minute, I think. That's literally how easy it is. So there's not really any excuse not to add TypeScript because it's going to be difficult or something. As you can see, there's some new errors here. And when people are learning TypeScript, I think the thing they bounce off the most is the amount that the compiler throws at you. It is challenging, you're gonna get new errors, but I think what you have to realize to start really liking TypeScript is that the errors are not there uh, as an impediment to you. The errors are there to help you. Every single error you fix is something that is a potential bug that got squashed at the static analysis phase. When I'm programming, I use as many static analysis tools as I can. When I'm writing Elixir, I use Credo to check as much as I can before my app goes live. I use Sobolo to look for security problems. I use Dialyzer to get as many type things as can be found by Dialyzer. And you should apply the same principle to every programming language. Even if you are an Elixir developer and you hate JavaScript, just try it out. <laughs> Use as many static analysis tools as you can because they're there and they're basically for free. So why not use them? Make sure you're using ESLint and make sure you're using TypeScript because it's going to find a couple extra things. Now, these first two things here are just telling us that there's no type declarations. Uh, we can come back to that. But this one is new here. Object is possibly null. So what that's telling us, basically, it's actually on this line here when we run get attribute on the result of query selector, uh, what TypeScript is telling us here with object is possibly null is that query selector is not guaranteed to return a value. Now, this is a contrived example, obviously. It's literally in the default code base. So this is not like a bug that we found. Nine times out of 10, uh, maybe 99 times out of 10, there's never really going to be a reason that this meta tag there is gone. But it could be, you know, maybe you are, I don't know, messing with the head tag and you delete this meta tag for some reason. It's possible that it's gone. This is a contrived example, but this is the kind of thing that only types can tell you. If you're an Elixir developer, you got to love types, right? So you really have no excuse not to use TypeScript. And I'm going to know if you don't use it. When people learn TypeScript, the thing that they bounce off of, like I said, is trying to just satisfy the compiler. It is kind of a skill because if you're used to writing JavaScript, this is a whole category of error that you're not used to knowing what it's even telling you. So it is a skill. It's not something you're just going to pick up and it's not just going to be easy, um, but it's not that difficult. So what we could do in this case, if we wanted to totally satisfy this error, now the way you tackle this problem is basically with type checking, type guarding. We need to check this intermediate step to see if it's null or not. And there's a million ways you could do this. One of them, maybe you could do something like this, where we assign an intermediate value and then we check, is it true or not? Uh, you could do something like that. Uh, it's telling us that we don't need to use let there. And by the way, I'm getting these errors about let because I always use ESLint, which reminds me, I feel like I should probably make a PR against the live view project to get rid of these lets because there's no reason for them to be there. But if you're not using ESLint, 
start using it. I'm going to make another video about it at some point. So you could do something like this if you wanted to be really safe about it. But of course, in reality, this meta tag is always going to be there. So this scenario is one where it's okay to tell TypeScript just to shut up, basically. One thing you could do instead is a non-null assertion. Looks like this. You basically put a bang before the dot. And this is a special TypeScript syntax that tells TypeScript this thing is never going to be null. You can do that. I've got biome linting as well, uh, which I'll maybe I'll talk about later. But I'm really into static analysis tools, so I use as many as possible. Um, so I run biome as well. And I have a rule in biome turned on that's telling you not to use non-null assertion. I'm probably going to turn that off. I think it's okay to use non-null assertion when you want, but there's like a million ways that you can do this. You can also cast it. So you can do like this kind of thing where we wrap this in parens and we say this is as HTML element. This may or may not be better than non-null assertion. It may or may not be better than an actual type check like we did first. It's just up to you. You need to decide moment to moment which thing to do we can turn these into consts as well. Now, what about these errors here? It says we cannot find a corresponding type declaration. Now, basically in order to solve that, what you need to do is you need to install a set of types that comes from this package here. This package has a whole bunch of types for various NPM packages that don't publish their own types. So on a case by case basis, some NPM packages you're gonna use are gonna have types. Some of them are gonna have types indefinitely typed. Now, if you have a new Phoenix project that doesn't have an NPM setup, it's really easy to add one. All you have to do is go to the assets directory and run NPM init, and we can just accept all the defaults or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Then we can install packages from definitely typed that have this types prefix. So we'll install Phoenix and we'll also install types phoenix live view actually it has underscores okay that's why you got to look it up because you never know how they're going to name it so hit go on both of those and if we come back to the project we are no longer getting an error and we now have types on these types here so if i hover over one of these definitions you can see now I have a type of live socket. I probably should have showed it off before, but before you install that types package, TypeScript isn't going to know anything about this, but because we installed the types package, it knows that this is a live socket. I'm going to show you how you work with those types, but before I do that, what about this error at the very end here? Property live socket does not exist on type window and type of global this. This is probably one of the most Googled TypeScript errors, I think. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff that exists on the window object and it's quite common to add more stuff to the window object. So this scenario of TypeScript thinks that this thing shouldn't be on window is a common problem. Here's how I deal with it. There's a couple ways to do it, but this is the best option in my opinion. We want to do something like this where we open up this global scope and when we do this, we can kind of monkey patch into the window object using interface. This is not a TypeScript tutorial, but that's one of the things that's different about interface. Interface lets you kind of merge declarations and type does not. And then we can say that there's a property called live socket on window and it's going to have the type of live socket, which is coming from the package up here, Phoenix Live View. The type is getting globally added so we can just use it without any kind of qualification. And now when we come down here, it says that window.livesocket is type livesocket. I would recommend you read through this article here by uh, TypeScript Wizard, Total TypeScript. Um, this article is really, really good. Everything TypeScript related is this website is a really good place to check. Now I think the thing that comes in most handy with types and Phoenix is adding new hooks. So we can define a hooks object here and we can pass it to the socket. And this is a little section from the docs about hooks. There is a hook we can take as an example down here. This phone number hook, we can just copy this in. 
So we could put it on here like this. It would go in an object and then we'd copy it in. And there's another one of those lets there. Maybe we should make a PR for that as well. Now, what we can do to determine the type of this is if your editor has go to definition, we can hit go to definition on live socket. And this will tell us the type of a lot of stuff in here. We can look for hooks. And if we look around the file by searching for hook, we'll find this interface called view hook. And this is what we're looking for. This is the type of each of those hooks. So, so the best thing to do in this scenario is to actually use the satisfies operator, which would look like this. It tells us that this type does not exist. That's because we're gonna to need to import it. So we can do that by doing import type view hook from Phoenix Live View. There's a number of properties that are actually optional, which are not defined as such in the types. So the way I would uh, deal with this is by using satisfies. And if you say satisfies view hook on this, you'll get this error that says there's a bunch of properties missing, like view name, push event, push event to blah, blah, blah. The types say that those are required. If you go here, you can see these are all marked as things that are always going to be there. And these callbacks are the things we define and it's live view.js that inserts them onto this object. Since this is like an exported interface. These should probably be on something else and there should be a public interface for this. And I don't know. I mean, we could make a PR to fix that, but one thing you can do instead is just type this as partial for now. So you could do that and type each one of your hooks like that, but you can also say something like this. You can say that this whole record is a record of strings and partial view hooks. And so now this is properly typed in that it's not throwing an error at us, but it also doesn't know about the existence of these things like view name. Now, one thing you can do to get around that is and now we're getting into some real TypeScript weeds here, but you can actually put a parameter here called this, which is going to correspond to the type of this. And we know that this is view hook. So now that it's properly typed, it's telling us that this doesn't exist. Uh, view name does not exist on type view hook. Did you mean view name? And we can fix it and boom, there we go. That's the benefit of using TypeScript and that's why you should use it on your Phoenix projects. That's why you should use it on every project. Um, if we didn't have this, we could make that error and we'd never know about it. And it's basically for free. This runs at compile time. So why wouldn't you do it? It's like choosing not to have tests, basically. I mean, I'm not gonna say TypeScript is easy. Um, I'm not gonna say I didn't have to pause the video at times and solve a couple errors here and there, but it's worth it. The more I look at this, the more I do think I really need to make a commit to the types library for this. But I am really wanting the types to just move upstream so we could get rid of this definitely type package and just put them in the Phoenix Live View NPM package. I would personally really like that. Um, I think I commented on an issue about that. If I can find the issue, I'll put it in the um, in the description maybe. But yeah, so I'm a big TypeScript fan. I could go on talking about TypeScript for quite a while, but maybe I'll just leave it there. If you like this and you want more content about TypeScript, let me know. If you want more tips on using TypeScript in Phoenix, let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. By the way, please remember to subscribe if you like this content. If you want more Phoenix content, TypeScript content, Elixir content, whatever the case may be.